mind. But I'm thinking in my mind, like, did he really just punch me? Like, I'm not about to be like useless woman for 10 years, all her life. She had to fight with this child. I'm not finna do that. We not finna play this game. It's you running through my veins. Your love runs through my veins. Okay, what's up, family? Um, I am exhausted, but I really just had to like hop on really quick and tell you guys about my day at work. Like, like the title says, TGIF. Um, happy Friday to everybody. I have never been more grateful that today is a Friday than I am right now. And I'm about to have like a quick little story time with y'all about my day so that y'all can understand why it was so crucial that today be Friday because I wouldn't have been able to go back in to work tomorrow. Like I just wouldn't have. Okay, so... Okay, so the day started like any other usual day, um, except for the fact that it was a half a day for the students because, you know, of course, the holiday is coming up on Monday. Monday is, uh, was it President's Day? I think is President's Day on Monday. Yes, where's my calendar? Yes, President's Day. So, cool. Kids have a half a day still. Schedule doesn't really change, only the classes get shortened. So instead of a 45-minute class, it's now like each class is now a half an hour. Perfectly fine. Regular day. Also today, we had a, um, a two-hour uh, Black History Month like assembly. So everybody was really excited to do that. Like A lot of the kids were participating in the uh, assembly. So it was like a lot of buzz about Oh, who wants to go to the assembly? So my class is for uh, developmentally disabled children. So they range from a whole host of different diagnoses and problems, triggers, all that gamut. They're all over the map with it. So we have five kids in our class. And today we only had four in attendance. Yeah, I had to look at... visualize the desk in my mind to remember how many kids we had so we only had four out of the five who were at school today so we asked everybody hey do you want to go to the assembly three of the four said no they didn't want to go cool so three children stayed behind three teachers stayed behind with those students myself and two of my of my fellow co-workers I don't want to like say people's names but whatever uh, Miss S and Miss L, just for context and the rest of the story. So, as we're like, the kids are getting seated, and we do the, uh, they do like the morning announcements, we do the Pledge of Allegiance, like everything is moving along as normal, like no red flags anywhere, until we begin our first subject, and in walks a woman we've never seen before a man we've never seen before, and a child that we most surely have never seen before. And they're like, oh, this is A, and he's going to be a new student in your class, and he starts today. And we're like, wait, since when? Because normally when we get a new student, they send us like a packet. It's like an about me packet. So it has like all the list of all of their triggers, what schools they've been in before, what problems they may have had at those schools, what their behaviors are, like what do they do? Are they self injurious or do they attack other people? Like all of that. We get all that information beforehand so that we know how to deal with this child. Nobody got any of that. The main teacher didn't get any of that. The my other co workers in the classroom, none of us. Like we're checking emails. We're like, wait, nobody alerted us that we were getting this child today. Where did you come from? So we finally get a hold of someone who's like, oh, yes, he is starting in your class today. Like, okay, but still, where's his packet? We know nothing about this child. So he sits down and, you know, we had an open desk. So he sits down at the desk and we're like, everyone's introducing themselves, you know, just the normal stuff that you do when you have a new student. 
And then he told his, because the two people that walked in with him, remember I told you, the man and the woman that we had never seen before. So they're coming with him. And they're like, oh, I'm going to refer to the woman as useless woman. And I'm going to refer to the man as useless man. And you'll understand why as the story progresses. So as the boy is getting settled in his seat, useless woman now begins to talk to us about all of his, like what he likes, what he dislikes, the best ways to like deal with him. And we're listening and like nodding and shaking our heads and like being cordial about the situation. But in our minds, we're all thinking, the hell are you telling us for? He has his own para. Like he has his own one-to-one person who's going to be dealing strictly with him. And we're only there to jump in as needed if it gets to be that he needs some help if the little boy like has a behavior and needs to be restrained. We don't need to know what he likes to eat. We don't need to know that he requires extra help when he writes because that's what his one-to-one is there for. So she's like, oh, you know, I'm just here to, I volunteer to come and just help him transition because I've been his teacher since he was, not even his teacher, but his age. She was his previous one-to-one. I've been his one-to-one since he was eight. Mind you, y'all, he's now like 18 going on 19. But she's been his teacher's age since he was eight. And so she just wanted to like come and help him get comfortable in our in the new school and everything like Okay, cool, I guess. It's fine. So mind you, useless man is saying nothing. Nothing. He has not two cents to add to anything that is going on. So A, the new student, says he needs to go to the bathroom. So for our building, all the doors are locked at all times because of the kinds of kids that we deal with. Like they steal, they take things, they destroyed property, all that. So all the doors are locked at all time. You need a key to get into the bathroom. So I'm like, okay, you don't have your keys yet. So I'll walk you down to the bathroom. You can take it and I'll also be able to like show you where things are on the walk. So we're walking down the hallway. We get to the bathroom and the student walks into the bathroom and kind of just stands there. So I turn back to useless man and I'm like, uh, does he need help? Like going to the bathroom, like this like, you need to get in there with him. Like, what's what's happening? And he's like, um, I don't really know about that. She didn't explain that to me. And he leaves and walks away to go find useless woman who is in the hallway talking to another random teacher about, like, how excited she is for the new student to come to our school and just how he's, like, a great child and a great student and just blah, 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 blah. Okay, but what we need to know right now, ma'am, is does this little boy need help going to the bathroom? Because his one-on-one doesn't know. That was the first red flag. Right there, that was the first one. So, (laughs) at this point, I'm like, you know what? This is not my monkey nor my circus. So, the moment his one, the new student's one-to-one comes back to the bathroom, I leave. I chuck a deuce and I go. That's your child. You deal with him. So I go back to the classroom to deal with my one-to-one. We're sitting there. I'm talking to the other teachers like, you know, does anybody really know anything about him? Like, did you like, does he have a book bag? Is there anything in his book bag that could tell us more about him? Anything like that. So when the boy comes back into the room, we start asking the woman about other things about him. Like, you know, what are some of his triggers? Can you tell us? Because we didn't get any sort of packet on him. So she's like, oh, she's just like giving him all this praise. Like, oh, he's such a good student and he likes to do this and he likes to do that. And he golfs and he does snowboarding and surfing and all this. Like, okay, but that doesn't explain to us how he behaves in the classroom. Like, I don't, I could give a damn about the fact that he surfs. How does he behave in his classroom? How is he going to behave when he doesn't get what he wants? Like, that's what I would like to know. To hell with all the rest of that. So then she starts going into like, oh, and then this is his little binder and it has all of like his drawings. He's a very talented artist. And I'm like, mm-hmm, okay. But mind y'all, all the pictures that she's showing us and she's bragging about that he has drawn or has printed out. Okay, like they were important enough to him for him to print them out 
and for her to put them in like one of those little protective sleeves to add to this binder are all of like death and destruction. Like pictures of knives with blood dripping off the tip, like really scary masks, like sunken face looking things, like death and destruction, explosions. Like it was just gore throughout the whole book and she's just standing there smiling like a crazy person like isn't he such a good artist like no what he needs is a padded room and around the clock supervision given this notebook like what do you mean isn't he a good artist you should be afraid because i am now frightened like he the whole book looks like something that you would see of like a serial killer after the fact like once they find like their memoir or something like that's what the book looked like it was just, it was too much. So then she starts talking about, oh, and he loves scary movies. Like he loves Jason and he loves Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. Oh, Michael Myers is his favorite. He just loves him. And I'm just like, why is she so chipper about this? Like, ma'am, this is not a time to be chipper. Like he has no sort of sunshine and brightness and happiness in his life at all. He just loves death, destruction, and blood. Like that's it. They, all, everything you're saying to me, is just death. Like, that's all he likes. So then she's like, oh, and he just loves this gory movie and that gory movie and this death and destruction movie and this torture movie. And I was just, and we got to teach him something. Like, at this point, hide the pencils, hide the scissors, hide the stapler. Like, hide all things that are sharp and pointy because I just feel like he's going to snap and that's going to be the first thing he's going to reach for and he's going to go for somebody's eyes. Like, we're not safe. I don't feel safe. Now I feel triggered because I don't feel safe. So <laughs> the boy, new student, tells useless woman, I'm hungry. She's like, turns to us and is like, oh, what time is lunch? And we're like, it's not until 1140. She's like, oh, no, that's not going to work because when he gets hungry, that could be like a trigger for him if he doesn't get food very soon. And we're like, okay, well, we can't control what time the kitchen sends up lunch like that's not something that we can change like and uh, again it would be unfair for us to go and get a lunch for him and not the rest of the students we can't do that so then she pulls out a big bag of candy and sits it down on his desk and is like okay well we have this candy here that we can give you until the lunch arrives and we're like we also can't do that either because one we don't give the kids like outside food because we don't know about allergies we don't like, again, we don't know anything about this little boy. We don't know about his allergies. We don't want to like trigger the rest of the kids because, you know, once one child gets candy, all the kids want candy. We don't do that. So she's like, oh, well, then I don't really know what we're going to do because this is going to trigger a behavior. And we're like, okay, so what happens in this behavior? Like, what is it? you keep saying that something's about to happen. Please inform us what's about to happen. She never said she just kept saying that, oh, this could trigger a behavior. Okay, cool. Okay. So now we're kind of sort of on alert. But in our minds, we're thinking, okay, she's here and he has his one-to-one. -one. So if he does have a behavior, they're right there. They know him better than we do. They'll be able to calm him down. If they need to restrain him, they'll know the best way. We can just watch and learn from them. So... <laughs> Then she's like, oh, you know what? He's just getting a little bit antsy because he doesn't like to sit for so long. So I don't know how it's going to work with him sitting at a desk because he doesn't like to do that. So we're like, well, you can take him for a walk in the hallway if you need to. But like, as far as his desk goes, this is a school. Like, what do y'all expect for him to be doing? But sitting at a desk and learning, you're sending him to school. So she takes him for a walk, comes back. And at this time, there's still, now there are, one of the kids, like I said, had left to go to the assembly. So we have three children left in the room, still three adults, plus the two useless people and the new student. And our teacher, again, had to leave for testing. So the only male teacher that we have is now not in the room like he normally is to handle the, especially like the boys, if they start really flipping out. So, again, new student sits down at his desk after he's had his little walk. And again, I hear him say, but this time in a very, like, aggressive tone, I'm hungry to useless woman. So 
So useless woman, I guess, like, like not even I guess, she coddles the new student very much. Like, I guess since she had him since he was eight, she just still sees him as a child. So she still talks to him like a child, even though he's a full grown man now. Like he's 18 going on 19. So she like leaned over. Like, you know how adults do when they like lean over to like get in the child's face and get on their level and like talk to him in like this sickeningly sweet voice. So she was like, oh, well, A, lunch isn't ready yet, but we will definitely get you something to eat very soon. Like she couldn't even finish the word soon because as soon as she said, he took his hand and slapped the dog shit out of her so at that moment me and the two other teachers who i've already been working with we're up on our feet now because we don't do the hitting like you're not about to hit us we don't get paid to get abused but i guess the woman since she has been like with him for so long like that must have been like their daily normal thing like he must have been beating her up for decade, like for a whole decade, because if you've had him since he's eight and he's now 18 going on 19 and his first response to you not getting him something to eat when he wanted to was to haul off and smack you across the face. And her response wasn't even like one of alarm. Like she was used to it. She took it like it made her jump back and she like grabbed her face and then tried to like shake it off like she was stunned. And she went right back to being so happy and chipper and sweet and just Oh, yes. Now he's about to have a behavior. About to. Baby girl, he just slapped you. He had a behavior. Like, that. the behavior is on your face. He slapped you. So then as she's saying that he's about to have a behavior, she is slowly backing up and out of the room. And we're like, um, where are you going? Like, aren't you going to do something? Restrain him? Like, what, what, what are you going to do? She's like, oh, well... Um, they must, they didn't tell you guys, but we, he, since he's now assigned to your agency, we can no longer hit, uh, touch him in a, any form of like restraint because we're not trained in how to do restraints. Well, that is lovely to freaking know, because if we would have known that, then we would have asked for a man to stay behind. For that situation, especially since we don't know him. But now you tell us after he has hauled off and slapped you. That you are not allowed to touch him. So now it falls on us. The three women left in the classroom to try to restrain. This almost six foot man child thing. So now when she said that. We grab the caru pads, which are like these little cushion pads that we use to like help so that the kids, when they're like swinging and fighting, they don't hit us, but they hit the pads instead. So it's something soft. So we grab the pads and we have them up and we're like all around the room. Now I go to look up because useless woman is now out of the room in the hallway. She has left the premises. Okay. The whole scene. So before she left though, I have to add this in because it pissed me off. She's going to say... Um, after she said that he's about to have a behavior, she goes, um, can somebody grab my computer off of his desk so that he doesn't destroy it? Ma'am, in this moment, fuck you and your computer. How about that? How about that? Because before, like, she had to take him on that second walk and he came back, like, before he slapped her, she had pulled out her computer because he, we don't have an iPad for, assigned to him yet. So we couldn't give him one. So she pulls out her computer. And she's playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre for him. Like when I tell y'all death and destruction is his life. Like it brings him joy to see people be murdered and tortured. It really does. So we're like um, you can't play that because it's not appropriate. So I don't know if it was a combination of the fact that like we made her turn off his movie. And he was hungry or just like he just really gets that hangry. But after that, that's when he slapped her. So fast forward. So now we have the pads and I go to look for useless man. He has managed to slither himself 
to the back of the classroom into like this little section where one of the other students sits and is standing behind that student, like basically using her as a shield. I have never been more disgusted, <laughs> flabbergasted, and pissed at the same damn time. But like, how the hell do you do that? And you're supposed to be his one-to-one. -one. Like, you're supposed to, everything that he does, you take him there and you're supposed to deal with him, but you can't even touch him. So now it's come to the point where when you come, we come back, go back to school on Tuesday, you can't even take him to the bathroom by yourself. Like somebody's going to have to go with you because he flip, if he flips out and needs to be restrained, you're not going to be able to touch him. And so one of us is going to have to be there to be able to do something in order to stop him from having that behavior. Like, whew. But again, so useless man is there, hence why he is called useless man. So now we're all ready with the pads. Like, all right, what's he going to do? Which way is he going to go? What's popping? So he makes a step towards Miss L. And she gets ready, puts her pad up. Like, we all close in. Like, okay, he's about to go for her. So we'll just come with the assist. But then he, like, takes a step back and decides that he's not going to go that way. Cool. So we all take a step back, go back to our original positions. So then he like stands in the middle of the floor, starts crying, slobbering, just everything. He lets out this crazy scream, looks at me and just comes charging towards me. So I'm like, all right, cool. You picked me. I don't know why, but let's go. So got my pad up. I'm waiting. So he comes, pushes the pad. I like push it back. Like that's, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you offer the least amount of resistance possible, but just a little bit of resistance. So cool doing the pad we're, we're going back and forth like so so he grabs the pad and when they grab the pad they taught us to twist it really quickly so like it breaks their hands off of it and you put it back up on guard so i go to do that and as i twist it he lets go of it but he manages to get his arms over the pad before i can get it back on guard and is now clawing his own hand down my face, grabs my glasses, rips them off. Now he has my glasses in his right hand. And then with his left hand, comes across the pad and like punches me in my cheek. My head goes this way. And when I come back, I like put the pad up even higher at that point. But I'm thinking in my mind, like, did he really just punch me like I'm not about to be like useless woman for 10 years all her life she had to fight with this child I'm not finna do that we not finna play this game so once he hit me like the other two teachers that I work with come over one teacher grabs his right arm takes my glasses out of his hand puts it on a desk the other teacher comes and grabs his left arm, puts it behind his back. So now they have him in a multi-person uh, upper torso restraint, which is basically like they hook their arms around his and they're like have his arms like so behind his back, which like when two people are doing it, it really like it hurts a little bit because it, it stretches you out all up in here. So now he's crying because he's obviously never been in a restraint before because they just coddled him. They gave him every single thing he ever wanted and asked for, no matter how much he kicked, screamed, or punched, or beat them up to get it. So now he's crying even harder because he's now in a restraint that he's never been in before. So cool. So now I leave the classroom and I'm pissed. So I go to the gym where everybody is because we were the only class that had people in it. Everybody else in the building went to this assembly except for two people the assistant principal and a secretary who were in the office but they had both doors closed and once both doors closed are closed in that office you can't hear anything that's happening outside like they soundproof the hell out of it since they have important phone calls and they need privacy and such but no y'all just want an excuse to not have to come out and help because like if he was really beating us up Y'all wouldn't have known because you have both the doors closed and can't hear us screaming for help and assistance because you need privacy. But anyway, 
so I get to the gym and now I'm like, I'm, I'm heated. Like I fight or flight has now turned to rage. Cause I'm, I'm over it. Like how the hell can everybody be at this assembly right now? Somebody should have stayed behind in case a problem arise, arise, arose. Lord, he got me speaking improper English. Like, who? <laughs> but like somebody should have stayed behind in case a problem arose since we didn't know this student. Plus, we still had, remember, there were three kids still left in our class. One of those children in our class who's there all the time, by himself, he's a four-person restraint if he starts to have a behavior. So there were only three of us in the classroom. Regardless of the charges, we were already a man down. Like if the new boy had been a sweet baby angel and did nothing at all, if our normal student flipped out, we were still going to be a man down. Like it takes four people to restrain him. So why was everybody in the gym? So I'm heated. So I'm trying to unlock the gym door and I'm cursing at the gym door. Like, why the fuck is this locked? Like, why would they do this? Why is nobody even in the building? Don't nobody all need to be here looking at this damn assembly? Like, y'all wrote it. Why y'all need to see it? Like, I'm going off to a door, y'all, a door. So I get in the building. I find the man who's like in charge of discipline, uh, discipline because they don't believe in disciplining the children. So I find him. Tap him on the back like, hey, we have a situation in the room. The new kid is attacking staff and we need some assistance. So his automatically automatic response was, what about his para? Why are you coming to get me? Now, in my head, I'm like, mother, if I'm coming to get you, then it obviously means that it's something that his para and us cannot handle. So as the head of the discipline for the school, I'm going to need for you to get on the good foot and hop to it and let's go. But I just give a look like, because it turns out that his para is actually his bus aide, which we later found out is his bus aide. And basically since my agency is like short staffed with people because majority of the people quit all the time because of how the kids just attack you for no reason out of nowhere. We're short staffed. So we couldn't accept him since he was a one-to-one -one if he didn't come with his own one-to-one -one because we didn't have enough people. So they like basically promoted his bus aide to become his one-to-one -one aide. So that is why he is not trained in restraints and is not allowed to touch him. He's basically to just be there as a body with a pulse so that when if the state ever came in or the school district that is paying for him to go to our program ever comes in to check they can say that yes he does have a one-to-one -one with him and he's like following the rules and regulations and the guidelines whatever so now he's walking back to the building the main building where the incident occurred with an attitude because he wanted to stay to watch the black history assembly Sir, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Fuck that assembly. Just everything about it. Forget it. Because right now, it is going down in room 129 and your assistance is required now. So I'm like hustle walking to get back to the building because one of our other kids could have been triggered by what just happened. Now they're flipping out. So then I know that my two coworkers still have this child, the new kid, in a restraint. So their arms are all twisted up. They can't take care of another child That if they're flipping out. So I'm trying to get back to them so that I can help deal with our kids. Like, it was just, and he's just, like, going real slow. Steady having an attitude about the fact that he had to leave the assembly. Like, <sighs> so we finally make it back into the building. He goes to the classroom to see what's happening. I get stopped by the vice principal who wants to be put up on T as to what just happened. And when I say I lit into her and let her have it, I lit into her and let her have it. First of all, why weren't we given paperwork that this new child was coming in? Why didn't we get his about me binder, folder, whatever? Like, why weren't we alerted that, that was what was going to happen? 
And if you're like the vice principal, every other time you love to like throw your status and your position out there, why didn't you even know that we were getting a new student today? Because you seemed just as shocked and surprised when you walked in the classroom that morning and we came to ask you what was going on as we were. So how does that work? How did you not know? Like we were informing you that we got a new student. So how? How does that work? So I'm like, we never got a binder. We don't know what triggers this child. We don't even know if we're allowed to put him in the restraint that we put him in because certain kids have like trauma and tr again, their triggers, like you can't touch them certain ways or in certain, like all that kind of stuff that gets taken into consideration. Like we haven't seen his IEP. We haven't seen anything. We know nothing about this child. No one even informed us about the fact that useless woman and useless man are in fact very useless and can't even touch him so like it i'm letting her have all of this so she's like okay okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i understand you're upset i would be very upset you should have had all of those things and i'm uh, i apologize for the fact that it was not given to you and that it was all of a surprise i'm going to look into this matter and that matter and all of this and i'm just like first of all Please don't patronize me because your tone right now, you're talking to me in a voice that we talk to the children in. And I'm going to need for you to understand and comprehend that I am a full grown woman and I am in a special kind of mood right now. And if you don't talk to me nice, you will get an ass whooping that's not even entirely meant for you. So as she's doing all this, she's like, why don't you just go into the office and just have a seat and just calm down and um we'll go see the nurse and like the nurse isn't here everybody's at that damn assembly like why is every now this just sends me off on a whole nother tangent of why is everybody at this goddamn assembly when you knew that children were still left behind who couldn't go why did everybody have to go to this assembly so she's like okay well just sit here in the office and we'll just wait for the nurse to come back and i'm just like that's no, that's not it's what I'm not gonna do. I'm letting you know that right now off top. It's what I'm not gonna do. Like, so I just said, you gotta be kidding me. I use very colorful language. It but that's the gist of it. And I walk back to the classroom. So when I get in the classroom, they have managed to find our teacher, and he's back in the room. They pulled him out of his testing. He's back in the room. Um, the man that I went to go get from the gym. He's in another room with a useless woman trying to get information from her. Like, what the hell just happened? Like, why is your student attacking my staff? Like, all of this kind of stuff. Now he want to be professional. But when I went to go get him, there was no professionalism inside. He had an attitude. <sighs> so he's getting information from her in the next room. We got the boy sitting on the floor. Now he's calm cool and collected he has gathered himself he's just as quiet like he didn't just turn into the seat of chucky like it was just oh it was a day of days like it was so now i'm still like amped up like the, i have so much adrenaline in my body that i am shaking and i'm just like pacing from side to side like it was just i couldn't stop moving like i had so much energy and it needed to go somewhere so all the other teachers could see, so they're like, you know, why don't you just take your one-to-one -one and go take him for a walk to make sure that, like, he's not triggered, everything's okay with him. Cool. I take my one-on-one -on -one outside, we go on a walk around the campus. So, you know, I'm asking him, like, so he asked me if I'm all right. I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you all right? And he's like... No, I am not all right because I didn't like the way that he was grabbing on you and he shouldn't have hit you and that made me mad and I was gonna about to flip out on him. But Miss L told me not to flip out, so I sat down, but I was about to flip out on him because I don't like that. And if we go back in there and he does that again, I'm gonna flip out on him. So I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't need you to do that because my one-on-one -on -one is all of six feet, about 200, 220 He's a big boy. Who, 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 who's breaking that up? Not me. <laughs> Not me. 
his back is so wide that I can't I can't restrain him. I my arms because you're supposed to like go into like a prayer type situation with your hands when you put them in a restraint. I, I can't reach. My arms would never touch. He's a big boy. So I'm trying to calm him down because now he's getting excited, just reliving it about what he wanted to do and what he will do next time. Like, just no, 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 no. Calm down, please. Just calm, calm down. Everything's fine. I'm fine. He's fine. Everyone's fine. You're fine. It's all fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. So we take like five laps around the campus. Calm down. We go back in the building. He goes back on his tablet to do his schoolwork. Everything's calm. So we walk back in the classroom and new student isn't there. So I'm guessing useless man and useless woman took him on another walk down the hallways. Whatever. I don't know who they expect to be walking him all the time, but it, it, it won't be me. I just refuse. So they come back in. Useless woman goes, you know what? I think he just needs to take like a little nap because normally... Before at our school, he would take, we would allow him to take like a little two hour to three hour nap. What? A two hour to three hour nap at school. What? What is happening? Like, what do you mean he needs to take a nap? It's like, is there a room that he can, no, there's no, this is school. Why would we have a nap time room at a school where we deal with middle school to high school age students. We we don't do naps. And no naps. No naps. We don't do naps. So we're like, no, there's there's no to the naps. Um, we don't have anything of that kind. So she grabs the Ukeru pads that we just use to fight for our life. <laughs> she uses them and makes like a little makeshift mattress. Out of the pads. So now, if he was to, like, decide that he now wants to, like, do part two of the incident that happened early that morning and attack us, he now has all the pads. So how are we supposed to protect ourselves, ma'am? Hmm? How? I'm confused. How? Like, now we're just really going to have to fight. Because you have given him all of the pads to make a mattress on the floor in front of the chalkboard. So the teacher just watched her do it and then was like, no, absolutely not. Like, don't even get him accustomed to that because when you're not here and he comes back to school on Tuesday without you, he's not going to get nap time. He's going to get restrained if he has a behavior and he's going to get put down on the ground like he did before. Like, it's, it's not going to be us making him a mattress on the floor. So now she gets real huffy and she's like, oh, well, I just don't know. You know, like that's just what we did for him before and it calms him down. Like he gonna have to learn a different way because we don't give naps. We don't, we don't have time for naps. He's there to learn. This is school. This is not his house. This is not his group home. This is none of that. This is school. He's here to learn. <sighs> so the rest of the day was very... um uneventful to say the least <laughs> uh, everybody once the assembly was over everybody kept coming in to like ask oh what happened what happened because they heard us over the walkie talkies calling for assistance but i love how you hear us over the walkie talkies calling for assistance but nobody freaking came we had to go get you how does that work like and as everybody kept coming in to ask about that it just made me even more mad to see the walkie talkie attached to their hip and then to think back on the situation and the fact that, like, you heard us, but you didn't come. So, with that being said, I don't have anything to say to you. Like, at this point, I'm the way I'm feeling and how I still have the urge to fight someone, anyone, screw you and everybody who looks like you. You want to come and get a rehash, like, the gossip of what happened while you was at the oh so important assembly. Now you want the dirt on all the drama that happened while you was gone. No, forget you. And you and you too. Like, it was a day. It was truly a day. 
And at that point, I was so frustrated that I just started referring to useless man and useless woman, not by their names, but as useless man and useless woman, because you really just sat there like, I get the fact that you're not trained in how to restrain. Fine. That's something, okay, it would still irk and annoy me, but I maybe would have been a little more understanding of it if at least there's nothing wrong with your vocal cords. So even if you couldn't physically touch him to restrain him and aid in the restraint, you couldn't have called out to him, tried to use, like y'all are the ones who know him best. Y'all have been dealing with him for eight years. You couldn't even call out and say, hey, A, calm down, like something. What do y'all use to calm him down? Because y'all have never put him in a restraint. So all that, like that just told me that all y'all do is give in to his every will, whim and desire. And he's never, ever had to have any repercussions for his actions. And now you're bringing him into our school and basically just throwing him and us to the wolves simultaneously. Because it just, like you said nothing. Like they did nothing. They helped in no way. Useless man really hid behind one of our students the whole time that this ordeal was taking place. Hid. He never stepped out from behind her to offer any sort of assistance at all. Not even a word, a whimper, a whistle, like nothing. The woman didn't even see her. Like she completely left the room when it was all happening. Completely left and then came back in when it was safe. I was so over today. You don't even know. So yeah, that is my story time for today. Um, <laughs> I'm so freaking tired. Like that just drains everything out of me. I'm exhausted. I'm about to go to bed. It's only like, I think like eight o'clock, but it's time to go nine nights. It really is. I'm ready to go nine nights because this is, it was a trip today. I was supposed to be doing my hair like it's, washed and whatever like I just I don't have the energy I'll try again tomorrow but today mm -mm. today is a no-go but yeah thanks guys for listening to my story <laughs> please make sure you like comment share subscribe and I'll see you in the next one Bye bye <laughs>